Some of the reasons why I don't play many big new games is that most gaming experiences that I look for are more often found in indie projects. This tends to be a result of how independent creators will narrowly develop a specific feature or series of themes, so it's quite rare to see a dev attempt both a unique narrative and gameplay mechanics at the same time, as demonstrated in the upcoming Deadeye Deepfake Simulacrum. Incredibly overlooked, it can be best described as Caves of Quad, Deus Ex, and Hotline Miami merged with image board characteristics. In my view, the vast majority of indie games tend to be either heavily design focused with a limited story, or very narrative focused with only obligatory gameplay components. Rarely you see a crossover between the two categories, at least successfully. I don't mean to be too disrespectful, game development is fucking hard, but this is just how I view a lot of games. Maybe I've just become a curmudgeon or a little burnt out. In any case, I wanted to make a video on DDS not because of it being recommended by the developers of Peripatia, check out the new demo, it's amazing, nor was it even the actual game itself. Rather, it was the really nice devlogs that showcased various mechanical and developmental techniques that inspired me to give it a shout out of sorts. Because as a solo effort, DDS is really cool. The meaning of Deadeye Deepfake Simulacrum can feel a bit shitposty with the description being kinda of vague and contradictory, but this seems purposeful. It is yet another cyberpunk setting where you wake up after supposedly dying and being revived for a million dollars, putting you into debt bondage with an unnamed, unclear corporate body. You're quickly tasked with completing various hazardous operations, the usual mix of espionage, assassinations, hacking, and mass murder. The money earned through the missions is either spent on buying better equipment or paying off your debt whose interest rises daily. At any point, if you die, you're revived again for another million dollars, which isn't even optional, so you're constantly accumulating vast sums of debt. On the other hand, the corporation and the missions themselves are left very vague regarding context, so you might want to start delving deeper into your handler's machinations, and maybe, just maybe, that's something you don't want to do. Burmer. Right now, there's only a handful of characters and text documents you can read. It's supposed to be quite narrative heavy, with multiple routes and dialogue trees, with a couple branching missions offered in the demo. Although I'm intrigued, it's not exactly clear how expansive or how many unique questlines there'll be. The writing's alright, there's not much flavour text and most interactions are to the point. Occasionally there's some very sussy wordplay and memory, which I have mixed feelings for. The heavy usage of emoticons can feel a little dorky, yet also kind of nostalgic for the days of image boards. Their prevalence does give me Homestuck vibes, so uh, yeah. Anyway, when voice acting is absent in these kind of games, I encourage devs to add some sort of sound effects tied to unique NPCs, which I feel gives them a bit more character. If so, I could easily see myself charmed by these subversive characters. The gameplay loop of DDS has your starting character use their apartment's computer to check emails for new story related missions or select from an endlessly generated series of contracts. Despite debt repayments, money can be spent at the store buying new weapons, body types and explosives. Each of these have different randomly generated strengths and weaknesses and progressively get more powerful as the game progresses. You can also slightly alter your appearance, currently it's only adjusting various colours and weapon models. It wouldn't be amiss to include custom symbols and patterns. The computer is also where you can unlock and equip different abilities using collectible chips scattered across the levels. Currently, these are divided into 9 classes, fitting a specific playstyle, like stealth, combat, manipulation, hacking, and so on. You can only select 3 abilities at any one time. Each has a set usage per mission, as well as most having an ego cost. This game's MP or special points if you will. It doesn't seem like you can test out the abilities before spending your chips on them, forcing a few restarts to find your preferred skill set. Apparently there will be perks added later, so these may further complement your setup. While I've played similar games like FTL, Heat Signature and Teleglitch where you can go down different builds, my issue has always been the RNG and inclusion of permadeath making experimentation very costly. Thankfully, although DDS includes randomised maps, the main story levels are all manually constructed. In addition, death doesn't mean failure or loss of payment, just additional debt you have to pay back later, allowing numerous retries. This is crucial as DDS's gameplay, once you get the hang of it and accept the minimalist presentation, is really fun. Gunplay is pretty straightforward, top down action where you and everyone else can go down in just a couple of hits. The constant variety of weapons means you'll be balancing their fire rate, penetration, damage, spread and aim time against enemies playing by the same rules 
creating some really frenetic firefights. Arguably, a much larger component of the gameplay is the intuitive hacking system. So the gist is, is that you can hack whatever mechanical object is in your field of view by opening up your hacking software and then using command prompts to hack into it. Once mounted, you can check out what commands are available and any other connections to leapfrog into other services. These range from allying torrents, shutting down cameras, blocking communications, and even piloting enemies. Whenever you start hacking, you may alert the local system overlord who will start counter-hacking you, causing your weapons to malfunction and distort the screen. I'd like to see this go a bit further, as right now you can mostly ignore the overlord. The majority of hacks and commands requires data, which is gained by simply observing a device such as a camera, turret, or node. It's important to know that you can snap to the view of whatever you've hacked into, allowing you to view the surroundings and collect more data. It's initially confusing, thankfully there's a help list of command prompts, and you're advised to mess around in the training course and your apartment. Afterwards, the range of hacking and combat strategies becomes very broad. You can deploy bots to hack enemies, switch weapons on the fly, spawn copies of yourself as backup, clear out rooms with grenades, and even redirect bullets. Encounters progressively get harder, with tougher, more advanced enemies using their own abilities and hacks, forcing you to adapt faster. If you find yourself overwhelmed, you can briefly enter slow-mo, tied to your slug bar. This is very helpful in dodging projectiles or quickly scanning the environment. Alongside actually good fucking gameplay, there's some nice lo-fi beats which results in a challenging, interesting, and yet comfy experience that I rarely find. Of course, like similar titles, there are noticeable balancing issues present. A few abilities are incredibly useful, like that if combined with the already present slow-mo ability almost entirely freezes the game, making hacking in combat extremely easy. There's also a few dominant strategies. It's quite simple to hack a turret, hop into the main hub, and convert all the turrets on the map, decimating the opposition. Both ammo, health, and slug bars can all be refilled an unlimited number of times at different stations scattered around the maps, so it's quite viable to just spam explosive attacks with little consequence. Still, I kind of feel that Ego refill stations should be available as the Ego restoration ability is far too useful to not equip. These are all nitpicks of course, and will likely be worked on, although that's why I encourage more people to try it out and see what I've missed. Some aspects shown of Deadeye Deepfake Simulacrum are being further developed, including more dynamic environments and interactions. However, thus far, the proof of concept is compelling enough to recommend. There's already numerous playstyles and secrets waiting to be uncovered, making the replay value quite high. I want to see more games like DDS, and that's only going to happen if it gets greater attention. You can check out the public demo via the Steam page, and given the devs' responsiveness and new additional updates, I'm hopeful that it all comes together as another indie gem.